I hope you like lightning, lots of numbers, and crackling energy. <laughs> okay, this one is a lot of fun. Hello, my fellow sorcerers, and welcome, one and all, to a, uh, well, entirely new way to Arclash. And I say it with such Arclashness, because obviously, as you're seeing, there's no Arclash to be found. But if I had to describe to you this build, this playstyle, this creation, it would be Imagine Arclash, but instead of Arclash, you instead use Ball Lightning as your spammy, constantly used shock skill. And you might be thinking, whoa, Ball Lightning is very expensive on the old mana, and it's the Frost side of things that get good ways to have infinite mana. Well, as you're also seeing, infinite mana is very much within your grasp as a wielder of lightning. And this is just so much fun. Not only does it look gorgeous, because you just have this perpetual ring of death rotating around you, you don't really have to aim anything, you kind of just walk through dungeons, passing through enemies with like 15 ball lightnings as it melts them. You also get infinite crackling energy because you're spawning it constantly. This means not only are you doing an actual appreciable amount of damage with your crackling energy, to the point I would say this is also a crackling energy build, you are then reducing your cooldowns endlessly. You're then also throwing out constant chain lightnings as a little, you know, to jump ahead, second choice for our enchantment slot, as every hundred mana you spend gives you a free one, and you are spending mana like no tomorrow, despite it never actually going down that much. This is seriously good, and I am very excited to go through it with you. Essentially then, Ball Lightning just does more damage than Arclash on average, so it's an upgrade there, and then Ball Lightning is a monstrously good lucky hit procker as it hits so quickly despite having an inherently low lucky hit chance and you can build off that in so many interesting ways. And it feels like how my Blizzard uh, Spikes build was a sort of side grade different take on a classic Ice Shards. This is a sort of side grade different take on Arc Clash, but with a definitive higher damage output once you get the stats to get it rolling. I've been uh, pushing with it, and it's been going well, and it just feels very, very comfortable, is the best way I can put it. Given as with uh, many Sorcerer builds, you're just spamming your defense Defensives really quickly, and that makes you incredibly hard to kill. At least when you're actually fighting. But if you're wondering why I died on this nightmare dungeon. But you know, something like that would never happen twice, right? Why is that even possible? I know it's a skill issue on my part, but seriously, it's a one shot. Starting then with the skill tree, which I know is a shocking twist, we uh, grab Firebolt, two ranks, just so we can get to core skills. This is needed for the enchantment slot, as we want all of that sweet burning synergy, as it's basically mandatory for any actually viable sorcerer build, at least at the moment. Then we move down and grab all of the chain lightning. This will form our second enchantment slot, so we keep churning it out for three as we spam ball lightning. We enhance it for extra crit and then destructive, and then this will be a huge source of crackling energy, leading to more than you could ever need, so we permanently have it topped up, which is so helpful for a multitude of reasons that we will get to. Moving down to defensives, as per usual, the decision is no decision at all, we need all of them! Flame shield uh, to get that sweet immune with the heal shimmering. Teleport as the star of most sorcerer shows in combination with Raiment of the Infamous. And uh, the cooldown reduction and damage reduction too. Glass cannon because why not? It's free damage and we are not really in danger of dying outside of, you know, pushing like silly high nightmare dungeons. But then everyone's in danger of dying there. We grab the ice armor just for the extra barrier 
barrier and the tankiness. We don't need to uh, get any extras. And then Frost Nova 2 for our source of vulnerability, as that is very much mandatory. And then our lucky hit crit to reset the cooldown so we can spend them more often, get more barriers, and do all of that good stuff. Then down here, we want to enhance our lucky hits, as lucky hits are a big deal towards our mana management and having infinite. And then we want to grab a line the elements just so we can take mana shield. This will essentially always be up, so it's just a nice flat damage reduction. And then one rank of protection, because we don't need the raw barrier amount, we just need the pure uptime on barrier, so that gets the job done. Then to the, well, core, or I should say, mastery ability of this setup in Ball Lightning, all five ranks and enhanced, so it double ticks, and then mages, so every time it hits 50 enemies, the next cast stuns. This will happen always, just constantly, so quickly. You can see it as uh, you watch me go through. It's going 1 to 50, 1 to 50, 1 to 50, 1 to 50, just perpetually, and that's also important for a reason we will get to. Then we take the Inner Flames to get to Devouring Blaze for our huge crit modifier. This, again, is mandatory and half the reason for the Firebolt enchantment, the other half being the Paragon Board, we will also go over. Then we want Static Discharge. Lucky hit, 15% chance to form a crackling energy when you crit with your shocks. You will be critting constantly because this hits so fast and we have such a high crit chance here. So again, along with Chain Lightning at its secondary enhancement, we will have an infinite supply of crackling energy, which means very, very tasty things. Then we grab Invigorating Conduit for one of those tasty things, 12 mana, delicious every time you pick one up. This goes a long way to making sure you never run out of resource. Then we get Get our unstable currents as the ultimate of choice with the attack speed so we can throw out those ball lightnings even faster and then the free constant crackling energy while it is up. Then we only want causing currents to get our crit chance rolling. You will crit so often that you'll hardly have time to see this stack up on your buffs but it does make a notable difference. And then the key passive we want is overflowing energy so that the crackling energy hits are lowering the cooldown of both unstable currents and our teleport just perpetually because we have infinite crackling energy this never stops ticking and it means we get to use both abilities just well forever and that feels glorious so that is your skill tree then let's actually look at what's going on so our bars then set up thusly and it's fairly simple as i said it's just our clash but instead of our clash you press ball lightning you cast it very quickly you get it rotating you get it ticking you get it melting through enemies and you just mow on through the dungeon letting it rotate round destroying everything that you pass when we look at our enchantment slots, as I said, Firebolt for our first, and then Chain Lightning for our second. Every time we spend 100 mana, we throw one out for free. Chain Lightning hits very, very hard. Sadly, not as hard as it did all the way back in beta, but it's still very respectable. But this doubles up as a source of crackling energy, which then doubles up as a way to keep us on top of our mana situation. So it really does work on multiple levels. And you will see as our there it goes. The chain lightning goes a flying every time you cast four of these. And you can see it blitz off to the ends of the earth. A few moments later. Yeah! <laughs> I shouldn't get distracted in the middle of my build guard, but go! <laughs> And then your cooldowns are used as they always are to give yourself a barrier for barrier synergy and they will also help with mana as we'll get to and then they just keep you alive consistently as you go through. Always teleport on top of enemies, then frost over them to get the vulnerable going and because you are consistently having this huge volume of rotating ball lightnings, you can have them happening, teleport, take them with you and then stack a huge group of enemies on top of you and then everybody 
more lightning that's rotating round will be ticking on them and it's just beautiful. Essentially this whole setup lets us actually have a reason to spend mana as an Arclash-esque setup instead of it kind of just sitting there not being used which felt like a waste of potential and this taps into that potential. And yes, unstable currents every time you get to a big pack of elites or you need the extra damage or against bosses or really just whenever you feel like it because again it will come off cooldown constantly because we have crackling energy constantly reducing the cooldown as it ticks away throughout the entirety of what you're doing. Let's look at our gear then as this is a big factor in making this even possible to begin with. We will quickly look at the gems, you want the vulnerable uh, crit in your weapons, you want your armor skulls in your jewelry, and your ruby life in your armor. Aspects then, aspects, aspects, aspects. The most important one and the one that you need in order for this to even be possible is this one. Gravitational for ball lightning rotating around you at the cost of doing a little bit less damage. Without this, your ball lightning obviously just goes shooting off slowly in a direction and is no help to anyone. So this is very much mandatory. The rest of them, however, just support the setup. We have increased vulnerable damage while we have a barrier on we have a barrier on all the time so this is just a nice bump we get our increased crit chance when we cast Cora Mastery above 100 mana we're doing that a lot because we have insane mana regeneration and gain during this so it's just a free huge increase to the crits happening and then we move on to this Prodigy, using a cooldown, restoring mana. This is one of the key factors, along with crackling energy, restoring mana, that keeps you going. But the main reason we have this is for single target, for bosses, or if there's one elite left. Because against groups, we have infinite mana from a different source. But against a boss, as I said, you need those extra little bursts so you can keep casting ball lightning. As with only one target being hit by the ball lightning, lucky hits can't carry you quite enough. Then we get do more damage while you have a barrier. This is fairly standard. We always have a barrier. It's a nice little bump. Then we have, of course, the other fairly standard aspect of control, so we can do more damage to stunned, frozen, or immobilized enemies. This is a huge multiplier, especially as it stacks per form of CC, and we will be applying all of them. Then, on our helmet, we want lucky hit chance while we have a barrier. Even more barrier synergy, because let's just do it all, because it's so damn good. This uh, makes our lucky hit chance absolutely skyrocket, and it really works wonders to fuel the mana. Raiment of the Infinite to do our teleport pull-in group up stun, and now they're all dead. As we said, the ball lightning rotating on your legs. You want to have disobedience, so our armor is arising and we don't just get randomly one shot unless you're out of combat and a skeleton crossbow sees you from across the map but again I'm still not bitter finally on our legs you want uh, the flame shield binding embers so that when you have flame shield on you can move through enemies and you can immobilize them this is useful on two fronts moving through enemies is very very good when you've got ball lightning and you can just run in a straight line phasing and ticking on them all but also while we immobilize them from running through, we actually support our Devouring Blaze, which jumps the crit bonus from 30% to 75% as they're now immobilized, taking the extra hard hits, and you really feel it. When you have your ball lightnings going, you teleport group, you pop the shields so now they're all immobilized, stacked, and melting, they, well, yeah, melt. So, that is your aspects and how they come together, but it's not the full story. Now, at this point, normally I would just give you a list of uh, stats you're looking for on your gear, like get mana cost reduction and cooldown reduction, and I will do that, but I need to pay special mention to Lucky Hit, Chance to Restore Primary Resource. You can get this on your Focus, which you should have along with a wand, and you can get this on your gloves. I don't have it on my gloves, but... Uh, you've seen and I found you don't need two lots of it just the one will do this only is a 5% chance and uh, ball lightning is only a 7% lucky hit chance 8% with your barriers up but the thing is it hits so fast 
you will be ticking on groups of enemies hundreds of times, and uh, when you are rolling the dice that often, well, you come up a winner pretty damn frequently, which means that this just powers up your mana, and you have been seeing and will see it happen as you watch me go through the Nightmare Dungeons. So you need at least one lucky hit chance to restore resource on either your Focus or your Gloves, though both isn't bad either, but I do find it tends to be overkill a lot of the time. Past that, then, it is fairly straightforward. You want mana cost reduction where possible, you want cooldown reduction where possible. They are your top two. Then you want a lucky hit chance, either with barrier or pure. Then you want ranks to relevant skills, i.e. ball lightning, chain lightning, and all of your defenses. That's why these boots with plus four to teleport and frost over are a pretty tasty find, along with the mana cost they got to roll on them. I am pretty chuffed with these. Then you want crit chance, you want crit damage, you want vulnerable damage, lightning damage, lightning critical damage, and then pure int after that too, and you are good to go. I want to highlight the legs as well, as on them you can roll crackling energy damage, which actually is noticeable and worth getting, and you can also get uh, ranks of ball lightning on your legs, so look out for that too, as, as I said, that's one of your key gets if you can make it happen. Before we jump into Paragon, I want to go over and stress the five pillars pillars that give you infinite mana in this setup, despite ball lightning being very expensive. The first of which, as you can see, is the fact it costs 35 mana. That is from all of your mana cost reduction on your gear, and for me, that's taking it from 50 to 35. That is a huge gain, and the first pillar. The second, then, is your cooldowns giving you mana. That adds a lot, and it helps a lot. The third is your lucky hit chance to restore primary resource. That is a huge deal too, and I should note at this point that if you do get resource generation, as I have enchanted on here, I would recommend keeping it, as while it's not crucial or key, it does make a notable difference, and you certainly won't be upset to find it on your gear. The fourth pillar of this, then, is uh, the ability for Crackling Energy to restore 12 mana as you pick it up, coupled with how often you are farming them, and then finally, the most impactful of all of this, and in fact, if you can't get to this on your Paragon board, you probably don't want to swap to or try this build yet, Static Surge. Stunning close enemies restores 10 mana, and you can instantly see why that's kinda silly. In a world where we are Raymond of the Infinite stunning huge groups of enemies, it turns every teleport into a full mana restore. And because Ball Lightning does a stun after you hit 50 times on the next cast, well, that means that one of our Ball Lightnings always will be rotating round, stunning every enemy it hits, giving us 10 mana per time, and that flows it in massively too. And it is these five things, then, that come together to give you a bottomless well of Ball Lightning summoning power that lets you do this huge ring of destruction you've been seeing, and it really is such a great time. Okay then, let's look at Paragon board proper, and as usual, follow my steps as best you can. The first glyph here then is going to be the Adept glyph. This is crucial to the entire setup, as giving mastery skills an increased area, ergo your ball lightning is 20% wider, means that it will hit everyone you pull onto yourself with Raiment of the Infinite, and it just makes it much easier for this to function. Putting it here lets you easily activate it with the extra intelligence, from the close by nodes, and then we move on and grab our burning synergy board, the burning instinct. This is very self explanatory. Grab all of the burning synergy, head up here and grab even more burning synergy, and then glyph wise, we want territorial for more damage to and less damage from close enemies. And as this is essentially melee, this is just happening all of the time. Then we grab the frigid fate board or the vulnerable board, and then head straight down to get the 
big amp to your vulnerable damage from around it and then finally this one here the weakness for even more vulnerable damage. and for even more vulnerable damage the glyph of choice here is tactician to amp this node and you really feel that effect then we head straight down and get that cherry on top the static surge board yes this is the third board I'm getting but at the same time without the other two you're just not going to do enough damage that even if you do have infinite mana thanks to this it's not going to be actually accomplishing much so you still want to wait for this point if you have more paragon points than me obviously that's going to be much easier for you if you have less well you might want to wait off a little bit on making this happen we grab the extra maximum mana that really is useful and helps power our increased crit chance if we cast ball lightning above 100 mana and then the increased damage to stunned enemies everywhere that we can we're stunning constantly thanks to teleport so this is a huge gain the glyph here is going to be exploit for just even more vulnerable damage and more damage from hitting vulnerable enemies that is self-explanatory activate it as best you can and get as much dex to power it up as you can lastly then we would be heading over here and i wish i had the paragon points to get this because it's really going to make a huge power difference to this setup and it's going to be the ceaseless conduit board this will make your crackling energy hit so much harder and as you are permanently full of the stuff permanently pulsing really don't underestimate how much damage this will add to your build and you can go around grabbing the extra crackling energy damage too and you will feel it but primarily just grab the legendary node here you also then eventually want to end up with the enchantment board as just the extra percent non-physical damage is a really nice gain and a good way to cap off any given sorcerer build. Then extra glyphs wise you want to slot in control when you can to amp your damage even more to your stunned and frozen enemies from your pull-ins and your frost novas and then after that want the charged glyph to amp your crackling energy even more but most importantly give you an extra 15% damage for free essentially permanently as you progress that all results in a lovely concoction of lightning and as you've been seeing it really does work wonders I hope you have found this a interesting or at least different and fun take on the uh, sort of core R clash esque playstyle and setup and it definitely does offer a lot of what R clash doesn't primarily a way to actually spend you know your core resource to achieve a higher damage output essentially if i had to describe all this in one sentence the ball lightning style gives you much higher damage output and efficiency while unstable currents is on cooldown at the cost of having less powerful and stable currents when it's up as you can't compete with how fast our clash actually attacks in that sense but it's certainly worth looking into certainly a good time and I hope you find it as much too. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye